So some of the things you want to think about when starting a uh, Office 365 migration, obviously before we actually start migrating, there's a lot of planning involved in uh, involved in one of these projects. And in some projects, the planning trail is going to be even longer than uh, longer than the actual migration. Because once you've got the process down, you've got the communication down, it's really going to be relatively smooth sailing. Sure, there's going to be some bumps, but once you've got it figured it out, you've really done the uh, done the heavy lifting. And some of those things I want to say to think about is communication is really key, not just internally within IT, but also communicating to your end user community what's going to change for them. Because while it may look fairly similar, it's still going to look different. There's going to be changes. They're going to come in in the morning. While everything should work, if you've got it all figured out, we know there's always bumps overnight when doing something as complex as a, uh, as a migration. Or maybe you're on an older version of Outlook, an older version of OWA, something like that. So it's going to be a change in how it looks when they come in. Come in in the morning, the look and feel is going to be different. It's going to drive help desk calls up a little bit. But if you can communicate that, make sure people understand what to expect. Have people that are out there walking the floors on a department, say moving by a department, have walk in that area of the uh, office the next morning. Communicate that, set expectations. You're really not going to get that negative press that sometimes comes uh, comes internally with with these sorts of projects when people just get blindsided or don't really know what's uh, what's going to happen. So that's always something I tell my customers. You really need to assign someone from your project management organization, maybe you have like internal marketing or communications, and figure out how to communicate this. Make sure that uh, make sure that's something that's in everybody's face, really. Another one is thinking about uh, thinking about the technical side. You know, especially sometimes at a management level, people think, oh, I'm going to the cloud and so as a result, I don't really have to do anything. I'm just going to get rid of everything. It's all going to be in the cloud. I don't have to think about it anymore. And that's great. And that might be something you might be able to do if you're really a small organization. You just totally depend on Office 365 soup to nuts for uh, really for everything. But medium or large organization, you start thinking about things like, how do I provision users in there? We've got hires and fires every day. I've got to deprovision too, change the roles as they change inside the organization. And how do I authenticate them? Do I want them to have a second password in Office 365 that's subject to a different password policy and isn't something that I really have any access to? All I can do is reset it. It's really just going to generate confusion. It's going to drive help desk calls up. You may want to use federation instead, which has become this really key thing right now for a lot of people. It's one of those things kind of like PowerShell. We know it's over here and we really know we should probably learn about it, but uh, if I can I can just keep pushing it off, it'll be good. And with Federation, of course, I can say, you know, I'll use the usernames and passwords in my Active Directory and Office 365 will authenticate against that over the internet. But what comes with that is now I need high availability for a new kind of infrastructure. Before I had high availability for Exchange or SharePoint or Link, all this infrastructure cost a lot of money to set up, took a bunch of people to run it. Management, I go, great, we can get rid of that. We're spending millions of dollars keeping all this up. Now I need to keep ADFS infrastructure up and DirSync, the other component for federation and syncing all the uh, all the data. Because if that stuff's not working, especially ADFS, now I can't get into Office 365. Suddenly that great SLA they've offered is totally useless because nobody can log into it.